Hi, my name is Lorna Baker, and today we're going to be learning how to paper quill some jewelry. So I'm going to be making a pendant today. So I have some materials in front of me. I have some three millimeter paper, and I'm going to go over the sizes and colors of this paper that I'm using, but you're welcome to use any colors that you want or any types of paper that you want. You can use magazines, scrapbook paper, whatever. Um, I'm going to be using Mod Podge as my adhesive today. Mod Podge is a great paper glue. I have some scissors, some tweezers, a couple types of quilling tools, and my board here. So as far as paper goes, I have some half strips and some whole strips, and the half strips are just going to be used for the very tiny pieces at the top, my two light blue pieces, and it's going to be for my center pieces, which are my three. Um, I have one orange, one red, and a teal color. So for my main teardrop piece, I'm going to be using two navy blue put together. Then on the sides, I'm going to have one of the navy, so that means you need two pieces. You're going to need two pieces of a slightly lighter blue than the navy, and then you're going to need two of the medium blue and two of the light blue. And those are all the half strips, or whole strips, sorry. Um, and then you're also going to need one of the navy for the bale, but you could choose whatever color you want for this. Um, so I have a few different types of tools. I have what's called an awl, which is this piece right here with the black handle. I have a couple of paper quilling tools, which I will go over as well. And the awl is really great universal tool. I'm gonna be using it mostly to apply glue, but you could use it to roll your paper. So I'm just gonna show you with this little strip of yellow. So I'm gonna hold the end with my finger overlapping and then I'm just going to twist the tool and twist the paper, holding it secure around the awl. And you can see that it's starting to roll up here. So you can use the awl to do that. You could use a barbecue skewer or a toothpick. Um, but we're going to be using actual paper quilling tools today. So the difference between the awl and this tool is that this tool has a slit in the top that holds your paper. It makes it significantly easier. Um, if you don't have this slit, your paper could roll and move. Um, a paper barbecue screw will be a little bit easier because it has more grip than the awl. Um, but you can see how much faster this is because I'm just rotating the tool. I don't have to hold things into place, which is great. Um, I'm actually going to be using for the majority of this tutorial, this electronic paper quilling tool. So it's just like all the rest. It has the little slit at the top, but it has battery power. So instead of me rotating with my hands, I'm going to be using this tool and I press button and it spins and it's amazing. Um, you can get all of these tools online. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them from the majority of craft stores. A lot of times you can only get them online depending on where you are. So um, I know there's a few craft stores here in Sacramento that do sell paper quilling supplies, which is great. But the colors tend to be limited and a lot more expensive. Um, usually online I can get paper for a penny a strip versus five cents a strip. And in the grand scheme of things, it's not, not huge, but when you buy as much paper as I do, definitely want to go with the bulk. So these tweezers are an optional tool. Um, I have kind of fumble fingers and I think it will be easier to see what I'm doing if I use the tweezers and keep my fingers out of the way. So I'm just going to be picking up the majority of things with the tweezers. They're optional, you don't need them. The only tools you really need here are paper and something to twirl it around and glue. That's it, that's all you need. So this is a sizing board. And you can get these or you can use a template that you print out. You can forgo this and just eyeball it. 
Um, these shapes here correspond to the circle shapes down below. So if I have a 25 teardrop shape, I need to use the 25 circle, then pinch it at the top, put it in the middle. Um, so you'll see that there are different numbers all around. That's what that correlates to. So if you wanted a 15 teardrop, you would use the 15 circle and then you would pinch it at the top. Or for the triangle, you would pinch all three sides. And we're not going to be using a whole lot of variety and shape here. Um, for this tutorial, I'm just going to be showing you how to manipulate a circle into a teardrop shape and then kind of pinching and folding around your base shape. So for my, what I'm gonna be starting with, I'm going to be starting with my navy blue. And with my navy blue strips, I'm going to be taking two of those to start and gluing them together. So I'm gonna make one big giant long piece here. And I'm doing that not because one piece wouldn't be big enough for the shape, but because I'm making like a three dimensional jewelry piece that's gonna be standing alone. I want the inside of my big piece to be kind of thick, solid and filled in. If I used one piece, it would have thin twirls of paper on the inside. And I don't think that it would be strong enough to hold up over time. So I'm just gonna take the end of my navy here. And again, the colors are totally up to you. You can use any colors under the rainbow. You could do all one solid color and not change colors at all. And that would be a really cool look. There's different ways you can manipulate this design as well to make it into your own. And I'll show you two different versions using the same pattern at the end. I'll insert one that I made earlier. So I'm just taking my all and applying the Mod Podge. I like to use my awl to apply Mod Podge as opposed to a brush because a lot of times when I'm making these quilling pieces, it takes a really long time. It's a pretty time consuming process and I get distracted very easily, um, to be honest. So, um, you know, the cat will meow at me and I'll be like, oh, hey, good kitty and go play with the cat for a little while or... Um, my husband will walk in the room and we'll have a conversation and then the glue brush will just dry out into a desert of Mod Podge and it's not fun. Um, and you can clean out your brushes, it's just, no, it's, it's a lot. So I use the awl because I can just peel off any dried glue and get right back into my project. It takes less than a second to get the glue off of there. Um, with a brush it dries out, you have to scrape it out, try and salvage your brush, it's, it's a big ordeal. Um, you could leave your brush in water, however then your paper gets saturated with a watery gross glue and you have to dry your brush in between and it's... I just use something metal and I think that works the best and I highly recommend that as well for these types of projects. Um, they sell little containers for the glue that have a little needle point on top. Those frustrate me to no end, so I'm not gonna go there. Um, so I'm just putting my piece in my board here. I'm trying to get a 25 in shape here. And it's about the size of a quarter. So if you were to measure and you didn't have one of these boards and you're having a hard time seeing what size this is, my biggest piece is about the size of a quarter, maybe a little larger than a quarter. Maybe it's a Sacagawea dollar or something in, in size. So that's a great scale to use. And you could use that and you could just put your piece on top of a quarter to see if it's the right size as well. Um, these boards are just really handy. <laughs> so then I'm going to take my tweezers and I'm going to find the end and pick it up by the end and apply some glue. Um, this is where the tweezers come in really handy because I struggle to get these out of the boards with my fingers. So I'm just going to lift the little end here and I'm going to take my awl and put a little bit of glue on the end here. And I just dunk my awl straight into the Mod Podge container. 
Um, I actually don't open my Mod Podge container. I have a, a small one that I use just for paper quilling. I have a few Mod Podge containers. Um, and I have just a hole that's the size of my awl. And I just place it in there like kind of stabbing into the container and then I just leave the all in there a lot of times um, and it's really really convenient because I can just dunk it in pull out the glue dop it on so the process for this is pretty much the same I'm going to be using my size chart and I'm gonna be making all of my circles I'm gonna make all of the circles first because I like to give the glue a few seconds to adhere fully. So this is my, my largest size here and you can see on my pattern, it actually fits pretty good with my drawing, which is funny. Um, I just drew this, this before this without knowing what sizes I was going to be using. So it's kind of funny that it fits almost perfect. So for my next size, I'm gonna take another navy and I'm gonna size down in my chart. So just smaller than a quarter. Um, you just want each piece to be slightly smaller than the last. So if you're using this without a board, you just want to make sure each circle is slightly smaller than the rest. And this is why I don't pinch them right away as well. One, you want the glue to adhere and dry and be great before you start pinching things around. But also that way you can see the difference in sizes because it's for me easier to see the difference between circles versus the difference in size between teardrop shapes or heart shapes or anything like that um, because I can compare my circle shape which it all starts out as to another circle versus my circle to a teardrop shape which when you make it into a teardrop shape is going to look smaller so it's gonna kind of trick your eye and make it look like it is smaller and so you might make your second piece too large if that makes sense. So again just adding my glue. And holding it down. And I tend to hold it for just a few seconds until I know that it's not going to pop up. But if it does pop up it's really not a big deal. You can just roll it back um if you get glue on there and it pops up i would get as much glue off as you can and let that strip dry before you roll it because you don't want to roll a strip that has wet glue on it because you're going to glue it to itself it's not going to unravel so i just recommend letting that glue dry on the strip of paper and then you can use that paper again. Um, if you have the luxury of just grabbing a new strip of paper, that's great. Sometimes I'm on my last strip of a certain color and I have to conserve it. Speaking of popping up, <laughs> this one is giving me some troubles. So I'm just gonna hand wrap this back in because the main major part of my circle is still there. So I'm just gonna tuck this end back in. So it is being unruly and I'm gonna stick it back in my size chart. And then it can unravel. So I just wanted to be finicky there. Try and pick this up with my tweezers again. There we go. And so when I'm holding this after I pick it up with my tweezers, I support all of my coils with pinching it in between my fingers so that they don't um, get away from me while I'm adhering the glue. And once you adhere the glue, the coils are just gonna kind of do their own thing in the center there. Um, if you don't want them to do their own thing in the center there, you should pin it to a piece of um, cork board um, or a foam mat or something, whatever you have available um, so that they stay where you want them. So say if you want your center coils to be at the bottom or at the top or on the side, then you would want to pin those into place until you're ready to pinch it or glue them and then pinch them. It's, there's a lot of different things you can do to shape the paper. So I have my three bottom pieces here. It kind of looks like um, a mouse that I shall not be named. 
That's copyright. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna continue here and I'm gonna speed along and you're gonna see all of my circles being made. So I have all of my 15s and then I have my little 12s there. My 12s are my little light blue guys, these guys right here. Putting all the glue on, putting theirs there. It's just a really simple process. So for my center piece, I'm gonna take a piece of this um, medium blue and then my small half strips and I'm gonna glue those all together. So I'm gonna glue my red to my orangey red. They're both red, but one is a darker red and one is um, more of a true red, kind of an orangey red. And that's gonna be my center, but again, you could stick with all blues. You can change this up. You don't really have to do this um, color scheme if you don't like it to each their own depending on the availability of the colors that you have too. Sometimes um, the amount of supplies that I have inspire me. So if I have a magazine that has the majority of pink pictures, um, I'm going to be choosing a pink design. And so just like we did for that first one, I'm just going to go ahead and roll it. I didn't wait for these to dry or anything. The Mod Podge has a pretty good hold right away. But the risk to not waiting is that if you have any glue, if you're not as neat as I am, um, you may have some glue that has gone rogue and when you roll it up, it's going to stick to itself. Um, so I'm pretty neat with my glue application and if I do get any spillage, I tend to wipe it off with my fingers. Um, but if you are not as neat with your glue application or you're a little heavy handed with your glue application, I recommend waiting for these strips to dry before rolling them. And so you can see that I have a multicolored ring, which is really cool. And it's a fun way to get multiple colors in there. Um, you could use a third of a strip, a quarter of a strip, depending on how much color you want. So if you wanted a teeny tiny little center, you could use a quarter of a strip and then glue that to another could alternate colors and make kind of like a target pattern and I'm just going to show you these all together before pinching um, now I'm going to make my bale and the bale is just what you would use to adhere your like chain or cord or whatever you're going to be using to hang it around your neck um, you could turn this into an ornament it does not have to be a pendant you could forgo the bale, leave it off completely, and then use this piece to glue down onto a canvas and not make it three-dimensional. So um, this technique, you could just glue down onto another piece of paper or onto a canvas and make some really cool kind of floral shaped designs with this. So I just have this little like, it's a rolling pin that I use for Sculpey, but you could use a marker. It's about the size of a quarter. But if you have something that's smaller, like a Crayola marker, that'll work too. Does not matter. Um, you can use any circular object to wrap around. So I just have a circle and I'm going to glue that. So as I was saying earlier, the size that you wrap around, like if you're using a toothpick you know, versus a pencil versus a marker, you get a bigger hole in the center. So my goal was to have a giant hole in the center and have a really tight wrap. Um, so I used that piece. So I'm just gonna fold this in half and then in half again. And I'm doing that because I just like the shape. So the center here, the center loop, I'm gonna leave open and I'm just gonna pinch the bottoms. Um, and this is gonna give me something to wrap around both sides of my piece. So I'm gonna take the part that's doubled over at the bottoms there and I'm gonna use that to glue on top of this kind of uh, center that I have in my hands here. So I'm showing you how to pinch your pieces. Um, you can use tweezers, you can use other tools. I'm just gonna use my fingers for the majority of this. Um, so I'm just going to pinch it into a teardrop shape and I'm starting with this one because this is going to be the centerpiece to all of my other pieces. Um, if you wanted this to be skinnier, you would just continue to pinch. All right, so now for the bottom, I am just going to kind of pinch the bottom. It's really, really simple. I'm not applying a whole lot of pressure. I am not pinching the other ends. 
of all the other ones. I'm just pinching the ends of these. And this is how you get kind of an almond shape as you just pinch both. Um, if you want your coils to not be pinched, you would just move them to the side. So if you take the mass of your coils, put them towards the bottom and just pinch a few at the top. Um, you could pinch all of them and make a triangle as well by pinching the sides. So before I glue anything together, I'm going to make all of my pieces. I'm just using the um, cur natural curve of my finger as a guide for how I want these. They kind of look like paisley, um, the way that I'm pinching them. And I'm just pinching the ends together into a triangle and then pinching down around the curve of my thumb. And I'm doing that for all of them and then just flipping um, them around so they, yeah you see that so I'm just flipping it upside down so that you can get left and right side so that they're mirrored and these little guys here it's starting to take shape and you could just glue it on just like this you don't have to do any other kind of shaping um, you could just do straight teardrop shapes you don't have to do the curve or the bend in them um, you can play around with the way that you bend these shapes and you'll get different looks and I'll show you that at the end because I do have another one that I've made um, where the curve is slightly different and so you do get a different different look and the colors are different so this one looks more like some kind of fairy plant and the other one looks more like just a regular leaf so so I'm just applying the glue where it's going to be touching my base. And so in this case, this almond shape is going to be touching the teardrop shape right at the top. And I'm gonna show you the strength, like instantly you can move them around. The strength of that Mod Podge. And Mod Podge is not a super strong glue on most applications, but with paper, because paper is very porous, the Mod Podge seeps in so nicely and it has such a strong bond that I, I haven't found anything that really beats Mod Podge for paper. So now it looks like a little bird or fairy or something. Looks like it has little wings. So I'm just bending it down just a little bit more, reinforcing that curve because I want it to be more curved around this centerpiece that's pointing down there. And I'm going to be checking the shape of everything as I go and making sure that I like it. I'm just applying a little bit of glue where it's going to be touching. You want to be mindful of only applying glue of where it's touching because you just, if you're not planning on sealing this and you're putting it on a canvas, you don't want a lot of glue everywhere. I'm using a gloss Mod Podge. You could use a satin, um, but the gloss you can see wherever you have it because it's shiny and the paper is matte. So you wanna make sure that you're really delicate with your application there. So I'm gonna pinch the other end of this too because I think it will look nicer tucked in there. a little pinch and the paper is really easy to manipulate I'm gonna add the curve yes pinch my little end make it fit in there so I'm deviating from my original drawing because in real life I just like the way that this is going to fit better than having a big round piece you could have the gaps in between and that's totally fine. You could even make tiny little triangles out of the paper by pinching all three sides um, and putting those in between and that would be cool too. It has a lot of maneuverability. And if I wanted these to curve around and touch, I would just glue one in, let that dry and then hold, you can pull down and glue the edge down. So as this piece is drying, I'm just holding it so that it dries in the position that I want it. And I'm just gonna rely on the tension between the bond of the two to hold it down. Give this little end a pinch. 
much. And give this a little pinch. Once you've pinched them, there's really no way that I know of, of getting a nice unpinch. <laughs> so um, you really want to think about your shapes and what what your desired outcome is before you commit to pinching those pieces. And I've put mine on a piece of paper, so I'm betting there's going to be some sticking happening. Um, so I'll show you how to get it up off your, your paper here. If you're delicate with the glue, you should not have a whole lot of sticking to if you're using a piece of paper under. You could use parchment paper, which would help a lot with that sticking problem. Um, you could pick it up occasionally um, while it's drying to make sure that you don't adhere it to your work surface. Um, it's just uh, something that you have to deal with sometimes is that you accidentally glue it down. So I'm just going to take a little piece, pop it off. No big deal. So I have my bale glued on. You can see that there. And it's just on the front and the back sandwiched in between. Now I'm going to take this outside and I'm going to seal it. And I'm just using a Krylon Crystal Clear Glaze here. And I use this for a lot of projects. I use it for sealing alcohol inks. I use it for, gosh, just about everything. Um, this is my favorite brand because I find that it does not interfere with alcohol inks. It doesn't reactivate them or make them move. It's really great for sealing poor paintings because you can get a lot of thick, clear coats quickly. Um, for this, I'm just going to do a few coats here. I'm just doing it on the paper that I was working on. Um, got my little AstroTurf in the background here. So um, I'm just going to spray the whole thing, make sure that I have all of the sides. You could use a matte um, paint. I'm gonna let it dry on my trusty awl here and then I'm gonna spray it a few more times. So here is the finished project. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.